The identity of a nation is a critical thing. A country that doesn't understand its identity and purpose can't bond over shared goals in the present or form a shared vision of the future. America is a nation undergoing a deep identity crisis as a progressive cultural revolution rewrites its history and open borders transform its population. For decades, the Republicans ignored this identity crisis in favor of economic gain, supporting the agenda of large corporations and pushing a hedonistic ideal of liberation at any cost. Now that conservatives have seen the horror of drag queen story hour and woke capital, they're starting to understand the price that materialistic indifference has extracted, and many are attempting to change course. This is a critical development, but it comes far too late. Democrats are often clever enough to obfuscate their agenda, but Barack Obama was kind enough to articulate the left's goal of fundamentally transforming the United States of America for all to hear. This transformation has been underway for some time, and if Americans don't make a conscious decision about their national identity soon, that decision will be made for them in perpetuity. According to recent reports, the federal government has authorized the Border Patrol to begin mass releases of illegal immigrants into American border towns. Shelters and border facilities have been overwhelmed by waves of migrants who were emboldened by the Biden administration's destructive immigration policy. The foreign nationals inhabiting those facilities are about to surge into small American communities, overtaxing their infrastructure and radically impacting the lives of residents. From there, these illegal immigrants are likely to disperse deeper into the country, and without any real way to keep track of them, the Border Patrol will have essentially aided in making the illegal immigrants permanent residents of the United States. These new arrivals will join the millions of illegal immigrants that have already poured through America's open borders under Joe Biden and will help to achieve the fundamental transformation that Democrats seek. Anyone with a brain and a conscience is understandably concerned about America's rising crime rate, crumbling education system, and horrific obsession with child mutilation. Policies aimed at addressing these issues are both important and essential, but they become meaningless in the face of unchecked mass migration. Many of the illegal immigrants entering the United States come from countries with some of the highest murder rates in the world like Honduras and Venezuela. Just two weeks ago, a Mexican national with multiple illegal entries into the United States on his record shot five of his neighbors in Texas with an AR-15. Most illegal immigrants will simply be people seeking economic opportunity, but a nation can't import the population of another country without to some degree importing the problems of that country as well. The fact that the party of police abolition is also the party of open borders is no coincidence. There's simply no tough-on-crime policy that can outpace the unrestricted flow of illegal aliens into the United States. Open borders may have a serious impact on crime, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. Are you a college student who feels isolated as Cthulhu swims ever leftward? The Intercollegiate Studies Institute is here to help. ISI offers programs and opportunities for conservative students across the country. ISI understands that conservatives and right-of-center students feel isolated on campus and that you're often fighting for your own reputation, dignity, and future. Through ISI, you can learn about what Russell Kirk called permanent things, the philosophical and political teachings that shaped and made Western civilization great. ISI also offers many opportunities to jumpstart your career. For example, Nate Hockman, who's been a guest on this show multiple times, got his start at National Review through ISI, and he's just one of many journalists that ISI has helped start their career. If you're a graduate student, ISI offers funding opportunities to sponsor the next generation of college professors. But most importantly, ISI offers college students a community of people that will help them grow. If you're a college student, ISI can help you start a student organization or a student newspaper or meet other like-minded students at various conferences and events. ISI is here to educate the next generation of great Americans. To learn more, check out ISI.org. That's ISI.org. You can click the link down in the description to learn more. Ultimately, the Democratic Party understands that open borders allow for the importation of a voting bloc that will permanently shift electoral outcomes in their favor and alter the American political dynamic in perpetuity. Progressives shrieked incessantly at Tucker Carlson for noticing this obvious fact on his large platform, 
but the Democrats have been far from subtle about their goal. Leftist politicians and political pundits love to gloat about how the GOP's days are numbered due to the inevitable demographic shift in the United States. New York Times columnists write articles with titles like We Can Replace Them, while bragging about how mass immigration will assure that Republicans are never able to hold meaningful power again. The downstream effects of mass immigration exist in a state Michael Anton calls Celebration Parallax. You're allowed to notice them if you're celebrating them, but you're evil for noticing them if you disagree with the intended results. Sadly, democracy is a comically easy system of government to hack. If a ruling elite wants to stay in power and the current population will not reliably vote the way they're supposed to, the best strategy is to simply import a new, more compliant population who are entirely beholden to those in power. It doesn't matter if the ruling elite are pushing sex reassignment for children or war in Ukraine, if popular sovereignty is the roadblock to your agenda, the best solution is to acquire a new populace. If anyone who crosses a border can immediately become an American, then the population is fungible and can be manipulated, removed, or replaced as those in power see fit. The rulers owe no allegiance or duty to the people of the nation only to an ephemeral idea which can be redefined at the whim of progressive fashion. The electoral issue is critical, but behind it sits a deeper and more difficult question for conservatives. Is using mass immigration to alter the American population only an issue because it hacks democracy and impacts the outcome of elections? If our electoral system could be preserved, would mass immigration be acceptable, or is the replacement of the current American population in and of itself a problem? Much of permanent Washington, Republicans included, made a deal with large corporations to open American borders to mass immigration, both legal and illegal, for financial gain. Cheap labor and an ever-expanding consumer base drove record profits and soaring real estate prices, but they also cratered wages for the average American and made homes unaffordable for new families. Stocks boomed, retirement funds swelled, and GDP soared, but social fabric disintegrated, and the shared culture of the nation was redefined out of existence. Conservatives cozied up to big business, ignoring the impact on the spirit of the nation, and called it small government, but now the bill has come due. The American right has largely avoided the issue of mass immigration, both legal and illegal, by defining the American dream through economic mobility. If someone wants to work hard and make money, then they can be an American. But this is a terrible way to understand the identity of a country. A population which is considered fungible, kept in a state of constant flux by a ruling class which only cares about the financial bottom line, can never cohere as a people. No change, be it cultural or political, can ever last if the ruling class can simply upend popular sovereignty by altering the populace. Is the United States a nation or simply an economic zone? Are Americans a people with a particular identity or is the country simply a staging area for global techno-capital? A people bound together into a nation can eventually overcome many differences they can force the ruling class to answer specific concerns and compel them to care about the well-being of the specific individuals and groups that constitute the whole. But the shifting, rootless population of a zone defined only by economic ambition has no such recourse. They can simply be diluted or replaced if they rub the ruling class the wrong way. The United States must decide if it wants to exist as a country, or simply as a cash register for its ruling class. And it must make that decision soon, because time is running out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the Oren McIntyre Show on your favorite podcast platform. And when you do, Make sure that you leave a rating or a review. That really helps with all the algorithm magic. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Substack or Gab, if you want to watch these shows on Rumble or Odyssey, the links to do all of that are down below in the description.
And of course, you can read all of my columns and watch all of these shows over on The Blaze. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.